大家好 ，I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王。You know, sometimes in life, people do the right thing for the wrong reasons, and sometimes people do the wrong thing for the right reasons. It's hard out there in the world with so much passion and with so many worldviews. But every now and then, we get to see someone do the right thing accidentally. Those moments are near and dear to my heart. I'm talking, of course, about the very top China news story today: the lady who called the BBC fake news. Stephen McDonald is with the BBC as a China correspondent. While working on the riots of Hong Kong, he had an interesting experience with a counter-protester. But wait, let's back up. If you're in the West, you probably get a lot of your information from sources like the BBC. In America, we often hear people say, "If you want unbiased news, go to the BBC." So the standard is pretty high for them. Of course, the reality is often far from what people say. So what is actually going on in Hong Kong? It's simple. The local leader tried to pass a law allowing extradition, like basically everywhere else in the world, and the separatists on the island launched a massive campaign against it. Through their propaganda, they've managed to work up young people into committing crimes. There are people in Hong Kong who are so out of touch with reality that they think destroying their city is a good way to move forward. How many people? Well, that's an interesting question. Reuters, a well-known separatist backer, did an actual electronic measurement of how many rioters were there on July 1st. But let's take a look at what numbers we were told were there protesting. Organizers said there were 550,000 people protesting. So, how accurate is this 550,000 number? Reuters figure, which comes from using facial recognition software, that for some reason no one seems terrified by. Shows us there was actually about half that many protesters who marched. So I think we can guess that the organizers will reliably double the real number. Whenever you hear numbers from organizers of anti-government protests in Hong Kong, cut them in half. When they say two million, it's probably more like one million. They are using the generous number system, in which they count people sitting in a restaurant nearby as being part of the group. Did you walk across the street somewhere in the city? You're a protester. There have been some anti-riot protests as well. Many people in Hong Kong want to go back to work, want to move on with their lives, and yes, get closer to the rest of China. They've been protesting as well, though for some reason I haven't seen much coverage of that anywhere. It's almost like Western media wants chaos in Hong Kong. Anyway, so Stephen was in one of these anti-riot protests recently, and he had this to say: A protester from an.、Uh, A pro-independence group, you could call them. Okay, a protester from a pro-independence group, a separatist, someone who wants to break their company into pieces. Yeah, go on. Has been arrested for having explosives, and the police say ten Molotov cocktails in a storage area. Holy wow, this is big news. The rioters, who have already broken into government buildings, bitten off people's fingers, ganged up on innocent women, thrown bricks at police officers, and waged general violence against the city, have now been proven to have bombs. They have a bomb storage area. Look at that! Look at these terrorist weapons! No wonder this is the top news story. But why is the title of this story? Pro-China Hong Kong protester calls BBC reporter fake news. I mean, shouldn't the title be "Anti-China Separatists Arrested for Having Bombs, Knives, and Molotov Cocktails"? No. How about "Public Calls Anti-China Bombers to Be Labeled Terrorist Organization"? No. Nothing. If the big story here, according to the BBC, is that someone called them fake news. And not that these people have explosives. That kind of sounds like, well, like fake news, don't you think? Maybe as usual, I'm just exaggerating. I mean, the rest of what he says is going to show that the BBC is straight down the middle, unbiased news, not at all fake. Now this will fuel the、uh, criticism in certain circles that Hong Kong's political crisis is. Moving into a new, potentially more violent phase, and we saw that last weekend, and we may see it again tomorrow when there'll be a much larger rally than this in favour of democracy. 
Dear God, there's already so much to unpack here. So what he just told me is that the concern about the anti-China terrorists is not that they want to burn down buildings, potentially killing people. It's not that they want to destroy their city or that they have now shown the world that what I've been saying all along is true. They want violence. No, according to the BBC, the concern is that this will fuel criticism of them. Why is it bad to criticize anti-China terrorists? Unless, of course, you're saying that the BBC is on their side. If you're saying that the BBC wants more violence, then it all makes sense. Of course you don't want that side to be criticized. And by certain circles, do you mean every single logical person in the world? Who the hell wouldn't criticize a bunch of people burning down their city because they hate their country? Who are the certain circles of people that support this chaos? And notice when he acts like, oh, tomorrow there's going to be a much bigger rally in favor of democracy. While the size of protests are interesting, they aren't how politics actually work, as you know. They are more of an indication of how angry people are about something than how many people believe in it. So while there may be a larger rally on the other side, that in and of itself doesn't prove any kind of big point. But it's the next part that's more revealing. The people who want peace and integration with the rest of the country, you're calling pro-China, while the people with Molotov cocktails who want their country broken, you called pro-democracy? All right, dude, I really didn't want to jump into this subject because it takes more of a real discussion to bring proper context. But you're forcing it out of me, so here we go. Listen carefully and you might learn something about why the BBC could be called fake news. Ready? First of all, democracy doesn't exist in its pure form. There are no countries where everyone votes on everything and whatever the vote says happens. You know why that's true? Because democracy doesn't work in its pure sense. In fact, nothing does. A democracy like that would be extremely dangerous and volatile. Democracy does not exist outside of theory. Major Western governments don't allow for certain positions to be elected. They are appointed. That is not a democracy. When a president wins the popular vote but loses the electoral vote in America and doesn't become president, that is not a democracy. So then what's the difference between a democratic country and a non-democratic country? I think there's two ways of looking at it. The most common would be that in general the will of the people is respected, at least in principle. And the other way to view it is that the government itself is a reflection of the people's will. In other words, one way we could call a country democratic is that the government acts in a way that actually reflects the will of the people. And another way we could call a country democratic is if the existence of that government itself was founded by the majority of citizens' support. So let's take a look at what we could call a non-democratic government. That would be a government that owes neither its existence nor its policies to the people. Yemen. I know no one knows anything about what's going on in Yemen, but for the sake of this video, all you really need to know is this. There was a Saudi puppet government there. The people revolted and they tried to make their own government. The United States and Britain have been helping the original government as much as they can. The regime they want in power was not created by the people and has no obligation to the people. It's as non-democratic as possible. It's neither of the people's votes nor for the people's votes. So that's one of many examples of governments that are totally non-democratic. Now let's look at a government that was not put in place by the people, but it does for the most part owe its policies to the people. The United Kingdom, for example. Their government was actually sculpted more by noblemen or royalty than by the common person's wishes. But to a large degree, the direction of the country tries to reflect the people's will. When the government tries to go against the people, for example, by trying to avoid Brexiting, generally the people win out. So this is one kind of democracy. It's not of the people's votes so much as for the people's votes. And another kind is the inverse. It was put in by the people, but it doesn't necessarily owe its policies to the people. An example of this kind of government is the People's Republic of China. It was widely supported in China long before it even formed. By the time it was formally declared in 1949, the vast majority of Chinese people supported it. That's a democratically created government. Its policies don't directly reflect the people's votes because it's socialist. But there is always the checks and balances of the people's will. So there's a degree of people's will in the policies themselves, but also a high degree of state-initiative policies. 
In other words, it's not for the people's votes so much as it is of the people's votes. And then you have the fourth kind of government, which is both of the people's votes and for the people's votes. This is a government which was created by popular support and continues to generally create policies by the will of the people. You might put the United States in this category. The government wasn't imposed, and while it's not a democracy, it is democratic in a lot of its processes. So when you say that the anti-China separatists are pro-democracy, I don't really know what the hell you're talking about. You see, Hong Kong is part of a country, and that country created a government by popular support. It's called the People's Republic of China. Going against that government without popular support is not democratic. That's anti-democratic. Now, if what you're saying is that Hong Kong separatists want their individual will, or votes, to count more than they do now, then it sounds like what you're saying is they're unhappy with the current partially democratic government and they want to change it to a different kind of partially democratic government. Rather than the one that's democratically created with some policy owed to the people's will, they want a non-democratically created one with more policy owed to the people's will. That's just a different form of partially democratic government. So you can call them pro-democracy, but if you're not fake news, then you should also be calling the pro-China protesters pro-democracy because they are pro the government which was appointed by the people. You get it? This is why someone could view you as fake news. You're making it sound like only one side cares about what the people want, when actually that's the side that cares least about what the people want. They care about what they want. They view themselves as the most important voices. They don't care about what people in Shenzhen want. They don't care about what people in Guangzhou want. That's not democracy. They don't support democracy. You get it? These words you say are important, Stephen, because when you say them in that way, they reveal how deeply fake the BBC is. You can't be this incompetent or ignorant about China. So the logical conclusion seems to be that you know these aren't pro-democracy people, and yet you go out of the way to call them that. That's fake news, dude. And there's a sort of anti-media feeling uh, amongst these uh, it, it is amongst this crowd, uh, partly because they don't like the reporting uh, from what we're doing. Well, there's nothing fake in what we're saying, I'm sorry. Okay, so now we see this lady come along, and she thinks he's talking smack about the unity crowd, and she's saying he's fake news. She thinks he's saying they aren't peaceful or something, and he responds with, well, there's nothing fake that we're saying. Stephen. You are saying facts, but you're using weasel words and slipping in certain ideologically charged phrases. That's opinion. That's not the news, that's fake news. When someone says you're fake news, they aren't saying you're making up facts entirely. They're saying you aren't presenting them in an informative and truthful way. They're saying you're propagandizing in one certain way when you're supposed to be a news agency. That necessitates people like me to counter your BS. I have to come out and call you on it because you represent the company that most people are telling me is neutral. What you're saying is that there are two sides to this story, one which is pro-democracy and one which is anti-democracy. But the reality is one is pro-democracy in the sense of respecting the people's wishes and the other side is pro their own idea for how the government should run. That's not necessarily a democracy, dude. What you're saying is supportive of separatists and instability and dismissive of unity and adherence to the democratic wishes of the people of China. This may come as a total shock to you, BBC, but if you get every single person in China to privately vote online about if they want their current government or some other kind of government, the vast majority of them will keep the existing one. That's what you really don't get about China. People complain about this or that with their own country. But at the end of the day, even the most westernized, anti-China, Molotov cocktail-wielding idiot can't deny how effective China has been in raising the quality of life, the average life expectancy, the GDP, literacy, education, everything. So believe it or not, the People's Republic of China isn't perfect, but it is what the people want. The burden of proof is on you to prove to me why a million people, or however many the real number is, protesting, rioting, burning things down, is democratic. Until then, calling it such does nothing but show that when it comes to China, you are fake news. This lady may have misunderstood what you were talking about, but she still accidentally nailed it. Stephen, 
I don't know anything about you, and you seem like a nice guy. Take a long and hard look at how you're portraying these things and let me know if you see what I'm talking about. Because what I see is that this is not journalism. It's activism. And it's not even activism that supports the people. It's activism that supports a small minority of people that have a violent crust. That's not democracy. So what is it? Thanks, everyone. Xie xie.